The Incredibles is my favorite Pixar film of all time. And although I do think that they've made better films overall, it's the one that I get the most joy out of. It juggles interesting concepts, amazing characters, and a great story that gives us something that stood the test of time. And something that remains this date, in my mind at least, the best superhero film. Now after the release of Incredibles 2, I took a look at what the film could have been. And after rewatching Incredibles recently for a fan cast, I watched deleted scenes and interviews with Brad Bird where he discussed the original plan for the first film. And much like any other movie out there, it went through versions and discussions before we got what we did on screen. Now originally, The Incredibles was set to start very differently. Now it still had the same idea, Bob and Helen put in hiding, but at this point, they only had Violet. Brad Bird wanted to start out in a traditional American barbecue and slowly reveal that they were superheroes, meaning no precursor, no showing them in their glory days, rather just a normal family showing up to a barbecue. They were new to the neighborhood, meeting people, a traditional family, assuming that they are new to hiding their identities as well. Bob's helping out by cutting meat, and we see Helen being treated differently for staying at home with the kids. Eventually, that turns to her standing up for herself. Throw away my prime years, trailing after a bunch of snotty kids? No thank you. Hello, I want to do something with my life. Wait a minute. You consider raising a family nothing? Do you have any idea how much suffering would fail to take root if more people were just good parents? Well, I, what about risking my life? Well, I, uh, what about confronting evil on a daily basis for years so that people like you can sleep in safety and security? Would you consider that kind of job substantial? Well, that's the job I gave up for my new job raising a family, and nobody's gonna tell me it's any less important. What on earth did you used to do? Uh, uh, then Bob revealing that he isn't like everyone else and then trying to hide it. You don't even know where the hospital is, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there are different voice actors here, but you can see that the incredible style of humor and that little interplay afterwards shows the relationship well. But what happens next is the real change to the film. Yeah, what is it? I, uh, I think I found him. We hear a break in that night at the house, and then we see a familiar face. What did you take? The silver? My grandmother gave that to ah! me. <laughs> that grandma, what big teeth she has! Syndrome. Now, Syndrome wasn't Buddy, he had no backstory. Rather, here he's just a past villain who has escaped from prison. He isn't the character we know and love. Actually, he was set to not be seen again in the movie. And the best part is, they don't even know I've escaped yet. You'll be back inside before they do. Syndrome throws Bob around destroying the house until Helen breaks into the action. <gasps> oh, oh, no. Elastigirl? <laughs> You married Elastigirl? Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> and had a kid? It's a whole family of supers! Now we actually got a very similar version of this that ended up in the final film. But I really love the slow reveal of Violet and the impeding doom as they walk down the hallway. <laughs> Now, I actually really enjoy this scene, but the main takeaway is that Syndrome was never supposed to be the main antagonist. He was supposed to be a one and done villain, similar to Bon Voyage. Now, this is just a cold opening to the film, but you can see where the tracks are being laid and how things would differ. The original villain was never supposed to be Syndrome. It was actually supposed to be a character named Zarek. 
But after seeing the scene and showing it to producers as well as directors within Pixar, everyone really responded to Syndrome. So therefore they changed it. Zarek, the original villain, was meant to be very different. He was much more similar to that Lex Luthor or that Doctor Doom style of villain. The genius, cold and calculated villain. Supposedly he was meant to have a very unhealthy obsession with Helen and actually dated her in the past, which would have brought a very different angle to this plot. Now on top of this, they were gonna make changes like a pilot who was an old friend of Helen's who would have died in the plane crash or an extended scene of Dash in the classroom terrorizing his teacher. <laughs> but nothing comes close to Zarek and how he was originally set up to be the villain. Now this would have trickled down to the entire plot and really resulted in a completely different movie. That dynamic in the plan of Syndrome really lays out that entire plot. So you can just insert Zarek in there. Now, what I wanna do here is something I used to do in the past, well before the fan casting. I used to give my own take on a plot and what could have been if they had continued with this. So here's my opinion and what I would have done with the story if this was the opening scene. Now it's worth noting I'm purposely trying to distance myself from the original plot and although some plot points are the same, I want to construct a story that is both interesting and dynamic and emotional, but also I know it's probably not going to be better than the original. Still, let's take a look at this different world. We still have Bob, Helen, and Violet in Syndrome, with him set up as the character he was originally set to be, an opening act set to stage. Now after the scene, we fast forward a couple years down the road, and now we have the family. The young girl who we saw was invisible is now a teenager, and Bob and Helen obviously have Dash and Jack-Jack. The rest of the plot goes a little bit like the original. Bob stuck in his ways, but finding himself performing superhero acts again. But rather than getting called into the belly of the beast by Syndrome, he saves people from burning buildings, finding his footing, and eventually taking it upon himself to don the suit again out of his own merit. But instead of making this the Bob show, I want to focus a little bit more on Violet, that little girl that this film really opened with. I want to focus a little bit more on her and expand on that wonderful arc she had within the first film. Her unsure nature in finding her confidence is something I don't want to change, but I want to double down on. I also want to focus on Violet and Bob's relationship and how they kind of butt heads. And I actually want Violet to be the one who takes notice of Bob out superheroing again. And rather than confronting him like Helen would, she plays passive aggressive towards him, causing a further distance in the relationship. Now this would play out until Bob got involved in a situation that was publicized by the news. When Helen sees the story on the news, she watches as Bob is captured and we see a very familiar face, her ex-boyfriend, Zarek. When she gets home, the kids are rushing around saying they need to save dad. Helen sits them down and explains Zarek, how he is beyond a genius and how he's a past fling of hers. There are flashbacks of Helen in the relationship where we see the toxic nature of it. And as she explains and what she isn't saying to the kids, we understand that Zarek wasn't the most loving of boyfriends, that she left the relationship without him knowing and actually went into hiding soon after. She alludes to him being so obsessive that Bob was probably kidnapped in order to get her back. Helen knows she's walking into a trap, but she has no choice. Next, this plays out much like the film does. Helen goes alone, but the kids are stowaways. They make their way to an island and get to a point where they're rescuing Bob as a family. They grab Bob and as they make their way out, Zarek cuts them off at the exit. He takes them down one by one, focusing on Bob and punishing him with pleasure. Helen, seeing the pain that is being caused to her family, finally submits and yells, leave my family alone. I'll stay with you, just leave them. Where Zarek turns to her and says, you, I'm not here for you. I'm here for my daughter and turns and looks at Violet. Violet looks at her parents and back at Zarek. Zarek finishes off the family and puts them back in their constraints. Then he takes Violet and sits with her. We see Zarek who is calm and kind and understanding. He's trying to play into the side of the relationship that Violet has been missing with Bob. He understands her. He takes her around the island and shows what life might be like if she stayed with him. Now we see the similarities in appearance. Bob and Helen, Jack-Jack and Dash are all blonde and redheads while Violet has straight, dark black hair, much like her father, Zarek. As Violet's doing this, we come back to the family who's imprisoned. Helen sits there in silence, while Bob tries to explain the story to Dash. Towards the end of the superhero days, Bob was called to a case, which turned out to be Helen and Zarek. Flashback to Helen and Zarek in the middle of a dispute, one that leaves Helen on the floor and an inch from death. Bob comes in and saves her at the last moment. He fights off Zarek, and much like that first scene in the movie, he hears Violet in another room. Match cut from Violet's face as a baby 
to Violet with Zarek. We see a completely comfortable Violet for the first time in the movie. Where she once was concerned and scared, Zarek is helping her control her powers. She's not afraid of them. She's allowed to explore them, and she feels liberated. Cut back to a defeated Bob and Helen. Bob hangs his head when Dash pipes up and yells, she's still my sister, and vibrates so fast and is broken from his constraints. He frees his parents, and they go running after Violet. They break in on the two of them and exchange words. Violet, conflicted, stays still. Bob runs towards her when Zarek promptly puts him in his place. Violet is upset, and you can see it, but she does nothing. Bob, through sheer power of will, overpowers Zarek, but Zarek just throws more at him. He keeps on breaking free, but eventually getting more and more thrown at him. He's getting broken down. We see Bob visibly in pain, where he starts talking to Violet. He tells her that he may not be her father, but she was the best thing that ever happened to his life. We see flashbacks of Helen in a hospital bed, while Bob has Violet in his arms. He goes on to say, while well, getting hit again from Zarek, not only did he become a father, as we see him and Violet in these flashbacks, through the night with Violet sleeping on him, him smiling, him giving her a bottle, and he found love and a life with Helen, and he would be nothing without them. And as he gets engulfed with everything that Zarek is throwing at him, we see a force field appear. Violet smiles at Bob, at her mom, and at Dash. She breaks free, and at this moment we see her powers in full force. She floats around, breaking everyone free and disposing of Zarek. Violet comes down and hugs her family, looks at Bob, tries to say something, and Bob stops her and just says, I love you. Now, obviously, I changed this quite a bit. I tried to make it a dynamic of a father-daughter storyline and explores that Violet storyline a little bit more than the original. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think this is better or even close to the original storyline because it's honestly perfection. But this is my take if they would have gone with Zarek. Let me know if you like my version of this, as well as let me know if you would like to see something similar. Also, do you want to see an Incredibles 3? And would you want to age them up or keep them at the same age? As always, though, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.